Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through my original vintage Palatoy Cantina. Now I've always loved this place. That is not perhaps my favourite. That would be the Palatoy Death Star, but this is a very close uh, runner-up. And um, I seem to remember I got them about the same sort of time. Um, it's been a few years since I've got this one out to actually have a look at it. So I'm very keen to see what condition it's in. I seem to remember this one's pretty good, as I recall. Um, I shall also tell you how I actually came about this one, because this isn't my original one from when I was a kid, but it's one that I got in the very early 90s, and uh, it was from that uh, seller in Bahrain. So I shall tell you the story of that as well. I've also got some of the original figures that we see on the box here, plus a few others that aren't there, just to sort of liven the scene up a bit. So anyway, that's what we're going to be having a look at now. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so on the first face of it, this isn't too bad at all. One thing I have seen, and it is very, very minor, is just in the corners. It's picked up a little bit of dust where it's been stored. Now, I haven't actually got this one in a GW acrylic case, but I believe they do do one. So I think next time I place a little order for some GW cases, of which I'm uh, sort of penciled an order together now, because I'm going to do some more carded figures now I've got somewhere to put them I think I'll get um, a GW case for this one as well but it does give us a chance to have a look at the, the fantastic box art here even the side art is brilliant isn't it I just uh, oh, I have a lot of fond memories of this one I have to say this was uh, a real good and back in the day so my birthday falls in November and obviously that's just the month before Christmas so I seem to recall that I had, I think this one for my birthday is like my main present. And then for Christmas, I had the Death Star. Um, but yeah, sadly, this isn't my original one, um, but it is because uh, I got rid of some of my play sets, but I uh, did pick this one up in the early nineties. Now I remember where I got it from. It was from a dealer called uh, Andy Foley, who uh, ran, I believe, the Twilight Zone. Not sure if he's still trading today, but that's who it came from. And uh, the story goes that the actual playset came from Bahrain. So I have recounted the story before, but it is very much specific to this particular piece. So what would happen is that the bigger toy fairs, like the, the Birmingham NEC, um, a chap would come over from Bahrain and um, what this guy had done was he'd found a toy shop or not a toy shop it was more a warehouse and um, the warehouse had stuff going back to the uh, the late 70s and um, it was all sort of stored in boxes in front of boxes in front of boxes and every time he came over um, he would either post a few boxes over in advance to his hotel and then he'd just take them along to the toy fair and sell them to the dealers and um, I seem to recall uh, Jim Mr Star Wars Stevenson would always have um, a case or two of figures off this guy um, but he did bring over some bits and pieces with regards these play sets I remember Jim bought a case of Palatoy Death Stars off him he paid this is in the early 90s, £2,000, so £500 each. This one's got a little bit of mottling on, you can see. Um, yeah, Jim paid £2,000 for a case of Death Stars, and he actually then opened one up <laughs> there and then. He said, I always wanted to see what one was like, you know, not sealed. Um, and, well, that was pretty cool. But the same guy, this guy from Bahrain, as he was going further and further back so he started bringing back Jedi stuff and Jedi cases and it was all Palatoy it was no Kenner stuff at all at least not that I can recall um it's evidently the Palatoy stuff was exported out to Bahrain um the further back he got in the shop um, the older the toys got and um yeah evidently he got back to the very earliest I don't remember him bringing over any early cases of figures but he did bring over these and um this particular one um has actually been on this was on display in a shop because it's actually got if you have a look at the price here it's actually got like a, a 120 scrubbed out 90. now that's not pounds it's not dollars <laughs> that's um the local um currency for bahrain whatever that is i don't know what that is now 
just looking at my one here um, it has picked up some dust and looking at the base that's also a little bit dusty and it's only sort of molded a bit of molded plastic then stuck onto a onto a base but this has never actually been cleaned and um ever and um i'm gonna give it a brush off but i'm actually gonna get um my toothbrush i think and i'm gonna get in and around the little nooks and crannies on this one and give it um a really good once over because this is i've never done it since i've owned it but it's definitely um over the years i've had it a baby well i've had it 30 years 19 i reckon 92 i bought this one off andy um so that's uh, that's 30 years now isn't it amazingly so in that time i've never really had it out on display but i've always had a soft spot for it because it was one of the, the pieces i had as a kid and uh, you remember those the best don't you but yeah i had this in in and around late november for my birthday and then i was given the death star as my main christmas present and i think one of my grands bought me the palatoy land speeder which is really cool um I'm pretty sure this was a present from mum and dad. But it's cleaned up quite nicely. It's quite nice. We'll get to all the bits and pieces in a minute. But first, I do want to um, uh, get the toothbrush in the little crevices there. Right, so, armed with my toothbrush, I can just get into these little nooks and crannies. make sure everything is as dust free as possible really. As I said I'm certain there's a nice GW case for these now and this will look absolutely gorgeous in it. Now the only other sort of larger place that this sort of size that I had as a kid was the uh, Land of the Jowls. It's the British one which has got the, uh, the cardboard sand cooler not particularly good and I don't have many fond memories of that I do I do however have many a fond memory of this one so I think that's looking a little bit better um, Being a plastic base, it picks up all the dirt, doesn't it? So, well, that goes there, doesn't it? Like so. Well, let's have a look at the inside the bag now. I believe, looking at the uh, the tape here, that this must be the original bag. Now, I saw on one of the Facebook groups that the original bag that the Death Star bits and pieces came in sold for a hundred a hundred pounds, if you can believe it. I'm sure this isn't quite as expensive. This is a relatively cheaper playset in uh, compared to others, uh, shall we say. But I've got a fair few bits and pieces here. And we got um so this is an unused sticker set. So that would have been the the tabletop over there. And this bit goes that would have been around the top of the bar. And then we've got the sign up saying no droids and open and that's the uh the front of the bar like so um i don't know if we're going to be able to make this up because this is so mint and flat i really don't want to uh damage it much but we'll have a good look at the uh, pieces and here's the original instructions so obviously they've got a still from that famous scene where they're hiring han and chewy power toy 77 yeah, well, we know how to set it up. It's just I don't really want to uh, use any of the pieces just for the sake of the video, but nice to see the instructions there. So I slide these back in. Well, what I've found is that to actually assemble this one as if it was like the box, I'm really gonna have to take it and take it to bits and stop it being as mint as it really is because as you can see, this one's an absolute beauty. The stickers have never been applied and I really don't wanna be doing that to uh, such a, a beautiful mint playset. However, I thought if we just pull a couple of bits to one side, we can at least 
uh, recreate a little bit of the uh, the action. So on the box there, we've got, this is where the bar would have been. Um, we <laughs> would have had uh, old Hammerhead up there. Somehow, for some reason, Hammerhead was uh, behind the bar. He was serving this time. Now this is quite interesting. So this is like a little, um, you see the figures go on like that. And on the box are, they've got Ben Kenobi um, attacking Greedo. So why don't we uh, do that right now? There we are. I remember playing with this sort of feature when I was a kid. And uh, they would definitely be having battles. I don't seem to recall it was Ben. Ben and Greedo, because I would have remembered that, but there we are. But that's that's the idea, which is pretty cool. Now, around the table, we've got um, Snaggletooth and uh, Walrus Man. They would have been over there. And of course, although I've got these on these, these would have had yellow bases. And this cantina came with four yellow bases. I've actually got three spare ones of these, which I've ended up not using in my uh, main run. But look, if they go on the yellow base, you c they actually blend in there, which is really cool, isn't it? And so that, that's pretty nice. Now, that's all the ones that were featured on the box. And for some reason, and I don't know why, but they didn't, for some reason, include, um, you know, Luke... Han or Chewy, even though they're on the instructions. So, I mean, these these figures were like the next ones, weren't they? So I wonder why they weren't included. Um, of course, they did release this one, this Palatoy Cantina, with the four um, Cantina aliens carded. It was like a special set, which came with four carded figures. How amazing would that have been to own one of them? And I bet that one goes for a pretty penny. But what I thought I'd do, I did bring my original figures so i brought along my hand here to uh join the action because they fit in perfectly don't they and of course they could go on a, a yellow pace as well like so so you can have them sort of sat around as the doors fall out <laughs> and i brought my luke farm boy he was probably too young to drink at the time but i'm sure he didn't mind and we could say they were uh waiting for Ben and uh, the droids I didn't bring along but they were no doubt outside guarding the land speeder and Chewie there not saying a lot in this particular scene yes an absolutely stonking set this one and uh, it really was cool and I remember just loving this one to death as I said I played it and played it until I got my Death Star and even then I used to have the two of them set up side by side um, it's in a way, it's a bit of a shame that this one is in such nice condition. Um, I can't really assemble it to uh, recreate the box art, even though, you know, I was literally that kid around the same sort of age when this uh, when this set first came out. Absolutely brilliant. Once again, a bit mystified why they didn't include these figures on the box art. But looking at it now, maybe that would have made the scene a bit too busy. I don't know. Uh, who can tell, eh? But yeah, a fantastic, fantastic piece. So um, in the comments below, do let me know if you ever had um, a Palatoy Cantina, because uh, I don't think I ever, I don't think in my school, anybody else ever had one of these. Um, a few of my mates had the Death Star. It was like the top toy that year, you know, for a lot of kids. That or um, um, a Tomahawk bike, you know, which was the one that came after the chopper. Um but I remember this really, really well. Um, the other ones around this sort of time, I said it was the Land of the Jowers. I think there was the Droid Factory, wasn't there? And um, the smaller uh, X-Wing and um, the Land Speeder, which I, I have got those. But um, I haven't got the Droid Factory. That's one I never actually had at the time. And I, I'm still after one of those right now. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And um, very, very nostalgic bringing this one out and... Uh, and getting it out as, as much as possible. Certainly one um, that I'm going to enjoy putting out on display and, and, and looking at and admiring um, and bringing back a lot of nostalgia for me. <laughs> now, um, I'm open to vote. So next video, so the next Star Wars video, I'm going to be taking the next eight or nine figures from my Return of the Jedi collection. Um, so I've done a little bit more upgrading now, so I'll be able to update you on progress on that one. Then after that, I'm thinking we might be doing a themed video, possibly on Bespin, 
related figures. So uh, that'll be one coming up uh, in about a month's time. But in a couple of weeks, we'll do uh, an updated one on uh, where I'm at with upgrading my loose figure collection. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a little look through that canteen. It certainly is a fantastic place. So I certainly love it myself. Um, if you have, don't forget to hit that like button. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage Star Wars content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.